Good morning, everyone. I want to talk about dealing with thoughts today. This may be one of the most important topics that I could broach because it gets right to the heart of what's wrong with people, what's wrong with all of us. Some of us are coming back. We've found the path, the way to God, and we're on our way back. And along the way, we have a lot to see and a lot to learn and a lot to leave behind. And we also learn wrong ways of trying to deal with issues and people and so on. And we learn the right way. Very often, the right way is much, much simpler than the wrong way. The wrong way is always complicated, frustrating, and doesn't lead us in the right direction. But the right way is simple. Now, let's talk about thoughts. I've been trying to impress upon you in the past couple of weeks that you have precious little control over your thoughts. About the only thing you can do to deal with the parade of negative and morbid thoughts that parade through your mind endlessly, ceaselessly, day and night. About all you can do is try to escape from them. So you escape into distraction. See, escaping from God, that was Adam's mistake because he wanted to try things on his own. He wanted to be like a God. He wanted to know good from evil. And he was impressed by the idea of what the serpent had said. He was ambitious, and he moved away from God. That was his big mistake. And that's what we inherit, a state apart from God. But luckily, there's a way back. But the way back is contingent upon your attitude. In other words, you must have a love of truth. Somewhere down there, you have a love of truth. Now, let's talk about thoughts. I said you have precious little control over your thoughts. All you can do is try to escape from them. You can try to distract yourself. In other words, when you have morbid thoughts, you try to think of a, of a nice thought. Or if you're having a parade of thoughts and worries, then you try to look at your iPhone or surf the internet or check your text messages or talk to someone on the phone or go get something to eat or go shopping. You see what I mean? Always distracting or watch sports. So we use things to escape from our negative parade of thoughts. But as soon as you're sitting quietly, as soon as you don't have anything to temporarily distract yourself, then there's the negative thoughts again. Now, daydreams. Just daydreaming away is another escape. It's an escape from God. But when the endless parade of daydreams becomes negative, like worries, doubts, and fears, then you try to escape into something. Or you try to escape into other kinds of thoughts. In other words, you actually welcome a problem. You welcome a problem because the problem is a distraction. And it takes you away from the negative thoughts. And it gives you something to focus on. And not only that, you can even get a, a sense of self-righteousness by thinking you're dealing with this problem and you're trying to solve someone else's issue and they should be doing it for themselves, but you're doing it. You puff up with a feeling of false righteousness. You see what I mean? So it's a distraction. So all of these distractions. But you have precious little control over your thoughts. So now you have endless parade of negative thoughts. What if this and what if that and what if that and what if this? And then here comes a problem, and it's a temporary distraction. You're glad, but then what is the fruit of that problem? The fruit of the problem is frustration. It's more worries, more doubts, more fears, and then memories of mishandled moments. In your separation from God, you don't have wisdom. You don't have love. All you have is the animal emotions of anger and excitement and rage and hurt feelings and so on and so forth, and impatience. So powered by impatience and resentment and anger, you rush around and make a mess out of everything. And then you become afraid because you've made a mess out of things so much, you become afraid of making a bigger mess because you know you will. So then you hide. You say nothing. You retreat. And then what? Well, then you're subject to everything. You're the doormat. And you resent that. And you don't want to see it. So you escape into more thoughts. But then your thoughts become your master. So the day comes when that endless parade of thoughts, see, basically your substance is being consumed. It's like a pilot light, you know, a little light that's it's on all the time. And it consumes, it doesn't consume a lot, but it consumes, doesn't it? 
A little burning consumes, and your thoughts consume you. They consume you from within. They eat away your substance, your life energy. You see that? They draw up energy from you, your life force. Maybe not much, but a little bit. Constantly. And not only that, but you have no peace of mind. You're anxious. Why are you anxious and tense and nervous and fidgety and you can't sit still? It's because of the thoughts. See? So now what you must do is control the thoughts, but you don't know how. I said you have precious little control. And if you try to control them, you lose. All you can do is try to escape from them. And then we drink and smoke marijuana and drink alcohol and escape into food, into entertainment and music. So wouldn't it be nice if there was an effortless way of controlling thought? And there is. There's an effortless way, but it's so simple. You may not have thought of it. It doesn't matter because I thought of it. Or it was given to me to think of it. Or it was given to me to know that it's right. See? And so here it is. It's very simple. When you get up in the morning, you go sit somewhere quietly. You close your eyes. And you look at the little pattern of light on the inside of your eyelids. When your eyes are closed and you're looking at your eyelids from within, you see little pixels of light, little particles of light, little, little patterns of light, or a little glow of light on the inside of your eyelids. Look at that light. Watch that light. Observe it. Delicately notice it. Just delicately notice it. As if you were looking out into space, very relaxed, and you notice the light. You see it. You watch it. Very gentle. Do you see? So, when you do that, the thoughts are gone. The worries are gone. The fears are gone. The endless, distractive parade of thoughts. What am I going to do now? What about this? What about that? What am I going to buy? Where am I going to go? What happened yesterday? What am I going to say? How am I going to pay this bill? All of those. All of those thoughts. Gone. What am I going to wear? Should I wear this? Should I buy that? Should I pay this bill? Should I go on the internet? Should I call John? Should I do this? All gone. But then before you know it, some thought will come along and it may even carry you away for a little while. You will drift away with it for a little while. But then suddenly you realize, you realize that you were caught up in the thought and now you're back in the present again, back in the moment watching a little pixels of light on the inside of your eyelids. So now I want to read you a couple of things. First of all, I want to read you something by one of my favorite people, and that favorite person is Madame Guillon. Madame Guillon. Madame Jeanne Guillon, a mystic, a very nice lady who wrote a most wonderful book, A Short and Easy Method of Prayer. In English it has various titles. One of my favorites is Experiencing God Through Prayer. A beautiful, beautiful little book. I talk about that book and how I discovered it in the introduction to my uh, Guide to True Peace Revisited. But here's what she said. She said, on distractions and temptations. So what do you think thoughts are? They're distractions. They're also temptations, aren't they? They're tempting you to escape, to deal with your own problems. See, that's ambition. They're tempting you to turn away from God and get involved with them. Listen to what Madame Guillon says. She says, A direct struggle with distractions and temptations rather serves to augment them and withdraw the soul from that adherence to God, which should ever be its sole occupation. Let me say it again. A direct struggle with distractions and temptations rather serves to augment them and withdraws the soul from that adherence to God, which should ever be its sole occupation. We should simply turn away from the evil and draw yet nearer to God. A little child, I'm reading from Madame Guillon, a little child on perceiving a monster does not wait to fight with it and will scarcely turn its eyes toward it, but quickly shrinks into the bosom of its mother in assurance of its safety. And now she quotes a beautiful verse from the Psalms. God is in the midst of her, says the psalmist. She shall not be moved. 
God shall help her, and that right early. Very beautiful. So I could read more from Madame Guyot, but I will stop at that point, and I want to read you something that I wrote. We're talking about thoughts and how to deal with them, and I said, learn to sit quietly and watch the little pixels on the inside of your eyelids. Well, here's what I wrote. Notice how things tend to draw you in. It may be a bit disturbing at first to see just how easy you are to get to. The tendency is to get lost in everything, experiences and memories of experience, then worrying and planning about things, even things that haven't happened or which don't concern you. It seems that the human mind is so constituted that in our fallen condition, we just can't bear too much truth. And the guiltier we are, we can't bear any at all. That is why it is so natural for us to fall into daydreaming, to follow any rabbit trail of thought or another's words. We pick up the ball and run with any idea or question, so we float away with thoughts so easily. But the problem is that we are not in charge of thoughts that rise to cater to us. Someone or something else is, but we float away. We find it entertaining, challenging, restful even, or we don't even know what we are thinking. So in this state, we are always partially submerged in daydream material, and we are influenced by that daydream material, especially when that daydream material causes emotions to rise. A naughty thought makes a man feel like a man, you see. And so a naughty temptation, any temptation, any temptation to try to solve something that's none of your business or to speak about some worldly issue of which you know nothing. Any temptation to buy something that you don't really need or even the temptation that grabs your attention away from thoughtfully pondering important things. Any of those make you feel like a man or feel like a woman. You see what I mean? They make, make you feel like you're important, like you're powerful, like you can solve things and do things and so on and so forth. But the problem is that it takes you away from God. It uses up your substance and feelings lie to you. See, a naughty thought can make a man feel like a man but it's lying to him. You see what I mean? So how do we turn off the stream of distracting and sometimes worry, worry some scary or tormenting thoughts? The answer is that you can, but not with effort. The answer is to yearn for the truth and rise above the pull of thoughts. In other words, somehow with a resolution that's not an emotion, have the intent of pulling out of thoughts. And it's so easy to do so by looking at the light on the inside of your eyelids. When you watch that light, the thought stream is gone. Look at the small but tremendous victory. Most of us cannot stop the flow of tormenting thoughts, and we walk around lost in thoughts and worries. If you can turn it off for even a few seconds, this is a victory. Here's the nice part. All you need to do is sincerely desire to be in the present and willing and wanting to be free of the thought stream. Your practice of looking at the inside of your eyelids will permit you to be in the present. But what happens is that you are standing in God's light. It is His light that cancels the thought stream, replacing it with effervescent heavenly computer data. The power that is of God is the power to which everything is subject, even the distracting thoughts. Subject yourself to Him, and then His power will protect you.